Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stefan Döhle and I would like to present the security infrastructure for Web Service Access Control in Access Eagle. First of all, I would like to give you a bird's eye view on the security architecture for web services that we have implemented in Access Eagle. As you already know from uh, last review last year, um, our security infrastructure is based on the industry standard XACML by Oasis and uh, it consists of various access control points that can loosely be distributed across the network and we implemented them as web services. For instance, we have the policy administration point, policy information point, policy decision point that actually decides about granting or denying access to a resource and the policy enforcement point that is actually uh, dealing with enforcing access control. The access request or now scenario is the access EGAF personal assistant client. Due to a lack of SOAP-based web services at our user partner, Schleswig Holstein, an example service has been used to distribute the access control. Just imagine Captain is offering a web service called Loveboard Q in order to reserve a sailing ship as a marriage location, and the marriage location shall only be booked by persons at a legal age. This is the access condition in our case. The access condition is expressed by an XACML access control policy that is requiring the booker to prove a legal age attribute for uh, executing the service operation reserved for marriage function at the web service resource. For administration reasons only, we have set up the test that locally, but all services can just as well distributed used. The access control policy is actually an XML based file. with the following rule conditions for the action received from marriage function. The access condition is that the legal age attribute shall be true. Just imagine directly ex uh, accessing the lifeboat key service shall be denied. Here you see functional parameters only resulting in the lifeboat key service denying access to reserving the lifeboat. Just imagine after successfully applying for marriage, Anna Rasmussen in our case wants to reserve the lifeboat key as a marriage location. First of all, the person system client asks for the policy that is actually in place for lifeboat key. Here on the left side, you see the, uh, the request to the policy administration point for the function for the operation reserve for marriage function. Policy administration point returns on the right side the policy that is actually in place for the lifeboat key web service. With this information, Anna is now accessing her attributes that are stored in the policy information point. She wants to retrieve her legal age attribute from the policy information point that is directly attached to XCGAF's own user management system. She can only request her legal age attribute after successfully authenticating with her XCGAF password. But other authentication mechanisms can also be envisioned. User attributes can basically be managed using the personal system client's edit profile functionality. In our case, Anna inserts a URL to let the legal age be computed indirectly by the inference engine. In case the legal age attribute is not known, the legal age attribute is either computed or alternative attributes are returned by the inference engine. Next, the policy information point is queried for the legal age attribute, given the access ID of hashed password login. The policy information point then returns the attribute that is in our case true. That means Anna is of legal age in Germany. Next, the personal assistant client queries the per, uh, policy decision point for an access control decision. Behind the curtain, some data flows are triggered by the policy decision point to the policy administration point and the policy information point. The personal assistant client then asks the policy decision point given the attribute name and the legal age attribute. 
decision request is returned alongside the response that is in our case improvement decision. Next, the personal assistant client requests the resource of the last book key service in order to reserve for the marriage occasion. In our case, the personal assistant client is compiling the resource request message based on the access decision that we just got from the PDP and the request is sent to the web service endpoint that is indicated in the service's own WSTL description. Access control is directly and indirectly enforced by the policy enforcement point that is placed in front of the actual web service resource. A handler chain is transparently attached to the web service resource and calls the policy enforcement point that is either blocking further processing or letting the service request pass to the actual web methods. In that case, a loose coupling paradigm is realized for adding access control to a web service resource that does not actually need to know that access control is enforced for it. In our case, the only thing that our web service needs to know is that there is a handler chain that shall be executed before executing the actual web methods. The handler chain in our case is an XML file that calls the policy enforcement point before further processing. The policy enforcement point then hands over the resource request to the actual web method at the last board key web service. The service request now contains in its header the decision by the policy decision point and in the sort body the functional parameters for reserving the marriage location. Northwood Key Web Service now returns the complete request in its SOAP header and the reservation number in the SOAP body. The reservation number is then returned to the personal system client. After you've seen the data flows of the access control process, I will show you how easy it is to integrate security into existing service choreographies in Access Eager. Just need to add the above code snippet in WSML into the choreography files. Then, the Access Eager platform resolves the access decision goal into a PEP web service or another subcode. Here is WSML service description of a land use plan web service as used in Slovakia. Just insert the new transition rule to perform the achieved goal access decision. Additionally, the annotations of related function services also need to be accustomed in order to accept the access decision token. What was achieved now during the last year? We implemented our web service access control system besides try to and it is based on industry standards just as XACML. The components are all integrated using the standard access of semantic annotations. Access control is now a simple add-on to existing web services. In order to summarize, we can say that the personal assistant client in our security infrastructure can be used for graphically administering the user attributes and for embodying the access request process engine in order to support the performance of steps zero to eighteen. The new service choreography within Access Eager can by itself be projected by the security infrastructure simply adding the access control annotations as seen before. In order to provide for additional single sign on access service boundaries, only some minor adjustments need to be made. PDP, for instance, needs to issue real SAML access tokens, and the policy enforcement point then needs to check for SAML token validity. Thank you very much for your attention.